Equinox Observations, Flat Earth and Globe Earth, Part 6, Wagon Wheel Sunspots. This is the sixth video of our series. In this video, you'll need a good zoom camera, a solar filter, tripod, and it will definitely help to have sunspots. Preparation and Tools. So this is absolutely imperative that you have a solar filter, a good quality solar filter, so that you can actually see sunspots on the sun. To see this clearly, you'll need a good digital camera, a good digital zoom camera, and a nice steady tripod. Unfortunately, sunspots vary day to day and year to year, so you will really not have much success if you cannot see visible sunspots on the sun. Making careful observations. You're going to essentially take two photographs, one very near sunrise and the other very near sunset. I've got a lot of more detail on photographing the sun in some of my uh, videos in the Flat Earth Experiment series, so you can check that out. Or you can Google photographing the sun. Please take uh, the advice on photographing the sun seriously because uh, you really could hurt your eyes or your equipment if you don't uh, use proper protection. Here are some examples of sunspots. And notice that the colors uh, change depending on what kind of filter you have and what kind of camera you have. But one thing is, uh, it is mandatory is that the horizon has to be down. Um, in other words, parallel to the bottom of the frame. The horizon has to be down in all these photos. So let's take a look at uh, a little bit of an analysis to, s to see if we can determine if the Earth is a globe or if it's flat. Let's uh, start by recapping the equinox. On the equinox in the globe Earth model, there is effectively no tilt the sun is essentially sideways to the tilt of our axis. So the sun is directly above the equator. Whereas in the flat earth model, the sun simply traces a path directly above the equator. Let's start with the flat earth model. Now here, you can pick your own map. We're gonna use the uh, something akin to the Gleason's uh, equidistant azimuthal map, but it really doesn't matter which map you use because in the flat earth map, the sun is small and close. Uh, so just pick your map and you can perform a similar analysis. We're going to use the uh, equidistant azimuthal projection. So on the equinox, we're going to see the sun for 12 hours. So let's say we have an observer in the UK, which is just below the North Pole in this image. And so 12 hours of sunshine should look like that. So if we substitute a beach ball and have the beach ball aim towards the North Pole in, in each frame, You'll notice that the beach ball is rotating around, but the, the UK observer is going to have a slightly different image. So the, the stripes are going to move slightly to, from left to right in one day's sunshine. What if the beach ball maintains its orientation, um, like north, south, east, west, maintains its orientation in the frame? So what if the beach ball, in other words, the sun, moves like this? What would the UK observer see then? The UK observer would see the stripes moving much more quickly but they would still move from left to right from the UK observer's perspective. So switching over to sunspots, how would this, how would this translate? Well, the sunspots are gonna simply sweep left to right across the sun. If the sun is moving across and over um, a flat earth, the, the results will vary depending on hemisphere and latitude. How about the globe earth model? And what is this wagon wheel effect we keep talking about? Well, most photographers who, who are not astronomers are going to be shooting things with what they call an alt azimuthal mount, otherwise uh, very similar to a standard tripod. And you're going to get the wagon wheel effect because of a change in parallactic angle in one day's time. Uh, most astronomers with, with small to medium-sized telescopes uh, use what's called an equatorial mount. And the equatorial mount is... It basically uses the axis of the Earth to stabilize the, the telescope. So in other words, if the, if the Earth is spinning approximately one rotation per day in one direction, the equatorial mount will spin approximately once per day in the other direction. In other words, it keeps the, the telescope or oriented in the same direction. You're not going to get any wagon wheel effect um, with this type of uh, arrangement. So we're going to pull an image from my Flat Earth Experiments uh, video, Shape and Features of the Sun. So 
in, for example, in the northern hemisphere, when the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, uh, the sun is going to be oriented, in other words, the parallactic angle, it's going to be oriented along its path. In other words, the sun does not align itself to our horizon. The sun's going to be aligned on its path. So when we see it rise in the east, it will be tilted to the left, and then it crests at zenith, and then it sets in the west, and it's tilted to the right. Here's another way of explaining that exact same effect. Let's take an observer who's standing in the UK, and let's say the sun is 93 million miles away through the computer monitor. So the UK observer, as, this, as the Earth um, rotates left to right in this image, the UK observer who's staring at the distant sun, we're looking over his shoulder, what will he see? He'll see the smiley face uh, tilted to the left. Again, the sun is rising for the UK observer. So 12 hours later, uh, the UK observer turns around, faces west. And again, he's still staring uh, through the computer monitor to a sun, a distant sun, 93 million miles away. But now his, his orientation has changed because he's standing on the side of the planet. So he's going to see the, the sun oriented, uh, rotated to the right. So how is this going to relate for our beach ball model? The, 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 the sun will simply rotate. In the northern hemisphere, it will simply rotate in a slight clockwise fashion, slightly clockwise. And how will this relate to sunspots? Uh, the sunspots will move something like this in one day's worth of sunshine. So here's the question. How are we going to measure the wagon wheel effect? So on the left, we have an image of sunrise. And on the right, we have an image of sunset. So how will we measure this? First thing we're going to do is we're going to place crosshairs over the sun. Uh, so we have the exact center of the sun. And then we're going to pick a target. In this case, we're going to pick the third clump of uh, sunspots from the left, or the first of the small sunspots as we look at the sunspots left to right. So that's going to be our target. And we're going to draw a line right through that target. So we're going to draw a line through the center of the sun hitting that target. Then we're going to extend these lines and measure the angle between them. In this case, the angle is 61 degrees. So essentially, the sun rotated 61 degrees in one full day's worth of sun on the equinox. So let's do a little bit of math. We'll divide by 2 and get 30.5 degrees. And that basically is the, the change of the wagon wheel effect, or the parallactic angle, in a half day, or from sunrise to zenith. And then we subtract that number from 90 to get our latitude. In this case, it's 59.5 degrees north. Now, because the sunspots rotated in a clockwise fashion, we know that we're in the north latitudes. If the sunspots rotated in a counterclockwise fashion, we would be in the south latitudes. And in this case, uh, 59 and a half degrees north is really close to uh, 59, uh, I guess that's 59 and a, and a third. Uh, which is Stockholm, Sweden. So, how did your results stack up? Please feel free to share them. Uh, you can go to flatearthmath.boards.net, set up by user Cara Diane. Please share your latitude and your wagon wheel angles, or you can just sim simply share your images. And that concludes our video series. We hope you enjoyed it. So please remember to be kind whenever possible because it is always possible. Thank you.